In this episode of Project Old School Celica, we show you a few bits and bobs that we're going to use to install Beamsy over there. And then with the help of my buddy Moose, we're going to rip out this dusty, nasty old interior. Hey guys, just a quick apology before we roll the rest of the video. I forgot to check the audio settings in my camera before recording any of this footage. So the audio quality is terrible. I apologize for that. I've also never shot my home garage before with the doors closed, so the lighting's really harsh. So all in all, not my best work, but you know what? I think it's still a pretty cool look at what my buddy Moose and I do to the old school Celica. So enjoy it, and if you have any complaints, then you can send those to Peter at speed.academy, because I really don't want to hear it. So to fit that beams engine in the Celica, there's a few different ways you can do it. There's actually a lot of different ways you can do it if you go online. Guys use different uh, front cross members from like the KEs, the AE86s like I have here. I was actually originally planning to use a custom tubular cross member built by a guy in California and that would let me bolt the motor in pretty much wherever I wanted with, with the making of a couple of uh, fabricated mounts. But with this AE86 cross member that I got from Pat Sear at Sears Garage Works, uh, excessive manufacturing makes, makes mounting brackets that go on here that actually allow me to use the stock mounts on the beams or I could use excessive mounts as well. There's a little bit of work to make this fit on the Celica's chassis rails. Uh, we'll show you, that, show you that in another episode. And as you can see, this is a pretty rusty mess. So I'll, I'll take it over to Stripping Technologies and have it all cleaned up. This is an AW11 steering column that should uh, fit right into the uh, joint here on the steering rack, the A86 steering rack. I don't know if this is the right length or not though, so there may be some customization required to mount this in the car and get it all made it up. So that's something we'll explore in future episodes. Just wanted to basically give you a quick overrun of how we're going to mount the engine and get some of the steering challenges tackled. All right, internet, behold the moose. This large sexy beast was our uh, technician at Targa Newfoundland. He did a ton of work on that car for us, so thank you Moose, and now he's helping us tear apart the Celica. And first we thought we'd show you some of the random crap that came with the car when we bought it. There's a trunk load of stuff, including, uh, God, what are those, like old light bulbs? And fuses, the original. Oh wow, that's pretty cool. Original kit. Fuses and bulbs too. What else do we have in there? There is, oh, that's the center console. The original. Have Yeah. Wow, that's, that'll go in the, in the garbage. Yep. The original air filter. Air cleaner. Yep. And uh, all kinds of just random, random. old stuff. <laughs> there was a fuel tank, a spare fuel tank in the trunk too that we removed. I'm not sure if that means the existing fuel tanks rotted out or not, but we'll have a look into that. Original bumper overriders. Oh yeah, bumper over thingies. Yeah. And okay. Anybody need an Excel uh, coil? <laughs> I think that goes in the garbage too. You never know, this might be worth money on the old Intrado app. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> Looks like a rectifier, but it looks good. Yeah, there's a whole load of stuff. Random stuff in the truck. And uh, actually, if we, if we show you the condition of the trunk too, it is minty fresh in here. There is no sign of any rust. Anywhere. So that's pretty exciting. Other than being a bit baked and crispy. Yeah, it's sun-baked, but man, there is no rust, so. All right, let's uh, have a look under the hood. And under the hood we have, well, a gaping chasm. One of Moose's favorite things. Although this is an automotive type, but we've got uh, lots of dirt. <laughs> and otherwise, a remarkably rust-free engine bay, isn't it? There's just sand everywhere, but not a sign of rust. Like the strut towers are super clean. Even the booster, I mean, the booster has no rust on it. Wash that off and it's gonna look like new, isn't it? Though the offside to that from the desert <laughs> is true. things like this where yeah, plastics don't. Yeah, they have not liked the, the baking, but whatever, that's, that's easy to replace with something shiny. So yeah, the engine bay looks great. And uh, there were no uh, desert cobras or other uh, desert dwellers in here. So thanks, Russ, for sending us a car without any wildlife. We appreciate it. 
All right, so inside we have a hideous driver's seat that we've unbolted already. Maybe you want to pull that out of there, Moose. It's uh, <laughs> covered in sand. I've seen better days. Yeah, but the frame's in good shape. So if we wanted to reuse it, we could if with a repolstering, but I don't think so. I think we're going racing buckets. And as you can see, we also pulled up the carpets to have a look at the floors, which are completely rust free. There's not a sign of any rust underneath the carpets. And well, you know, what else have we got here? We've got my shadow, we've got the dash that looks horrible and dirty and the dash pad's gone, but whatever. We've got a small steering wheel that we'll replace with something maybe a little more period correct. Other seats in terrible condition. And if this was smell-o-vision, you would smell a hideous smell of, what would you call it, Moose? It's like mm, an old age home mixed with dry desert rat poop or something. <laughs> it's, it's really not too appealing. So we're tearing all of this out. It's all gonna get replaced or just, you know, not go back in. So we'll probably run with no carpets and a bit of a race car interior, so. All right, let's get to the work. Yeah, that smell is really unique. It's. Uh, it's musty, as you would expect something that's 40 years old, but it's not like that damp mustiness that we're used to up here. It's more like a dried out old bag Heck. of... Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a dried out little bag of scrotums in there or something. It's, it's not pretty. But I think once we get all the carpet out, it'll be much better. So what do you think? What's the first step, Moose? What do we start tearing out? I say put up the door panels. The nice thing about old car interiors is all the nuts and stuff are exposed, aren't they? Yeah, it's, it's, there's all the clips and whatnot you see in the modern cars. Yeah, it's all just there. You can get at it easily. Well, we'll see. Yeah, I guess the door... <laughs> we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> the door handle is easy to get off. Well, you can find the clip. That's the hard part. It's find the clip. It's hidden behind the, uh, yeah. the ring. And as you can see, the, the kind of weird shag carpet they put along the bottom of the door is kind of nasty so and this wood faux wood trim is kind of falling off so I think we will go with a maybe a, a carbon door trim piece or a like a an aluminum you know black powder coated door panel I believe techno toy tuning actually makes them for this chassis so we may just order those or maybe we'll get Kevin our carbon guy to make us a set we'll figure that out as we go Little uh, pro tip here from a couple of hacks is to put your nuts and bolts, uh, no not those nuts kids, the, the metal nuts and bolts off the car into Ziploc bags or into a storage bin like this that you can label. And that way when you go to reassemble everything, it's easy to find, you know where everything goes. So yeah, that's a good example of uh, Dave not knowing how to focus, but uh, that's some door trim that Moose has in that Ziploc baggie. We've got like, uh, you know the seat bolts over here so everything's getting labeled and tagged so that it can all be found and put back together later when we want to reuse any of this stuff. You were making the point, the point too Moose that this stuff's hard to find isn't it? This type of trim, the car that's made in 76, very difficult to find, original trim. Yeah. So if you can save as much as you can, at the very least if you're putting it back into the car you've got it, you have to source it. Or, the, or you can sell it for potentially for a bit of money. Yeah, yeah, it's true. There's a big after, or not aftermarket, there's a big used parts market for this stuff. So why not try to recoup some money, right? Exactly. Plus you may help somebody else. Who's yeah. Trying to restore a car with all original, all OE rather than repops. Yeah, see Moose thinks about other people. I just think about the money. <laughs> all right, door panel ready to come off? I believe so. I think I've got all the clips off. Should. Just pop that off. Sweet. Yeah. Wow, that looks really good, huh? No creatures living in the door either, which is nice. <laughs> so that's the door rubber that seals the door against the, the chassis? Yep. And they are pretty rotten, aren't they? Uh, beyond. Just dried, dried beyond dried. Completely dried out, yeah. Well, those are available, so I will order some more of those. All right, Moose, so the door panel is made of what? Is that like cardboard? It's sort of a fiber board, I guess you'd call it. Somewhere between cardboard and wood is pressed fiber. Yeah, and you're thinking it's a good template for making a carbon fiber replacement or something. Exactly, I mean, it's flat. This is an old car. The door panels are flat. They're no fancy, fancy, all curvy door panels. Yeah. It's a flat sheet. 
with this molded piece of steel at the top. So I figure you could probably do a pet carbon panel. We use this piece up here that's been power coated. Yeah. And it's about as simple as it gets. Yeah, cut those holes where they are and you're good to go. Exactly, you got a template to work from. That's awesome. So the rear seats are actually in okay shape, at least the covers are, although oh, no. up at the top there it's all rotted out, eh? It's completely crusty. Yeah, and, yeah you can uh, see the top's completely rotted out. And it looks like there's just a couple of bolts down at the bottom that we we pull those and the bottom cushion will come out? I think so. One of the way to find out. Alright, have at it. Alright. The lower actually isn't too too bad. You know? Other yeah. than being dusty. Yeah. The vinyls and it's a little crusty, but it's held together. So it's just a piece of foam with a bit of oil on it. Nothing fancy. I'm not even going to bother with the back seat. I think I'm going to put a, a half or just a roll bar back there and a block off plate to the trunk. Yeah. So that can probably go to another Celica owner. Who wants to recover it? Yeah. So that's the top of the back seat cushion. And as you can see, it's pretty rotted out. Just the sun again, I guess, right? Coming through the back window. Yeah. The sun is the enemy of a desert car, but. And underneath there, there's just a bit of sound deadening down where the bottom cushion goes. But again, there's just like no sign of any rust, is there? Well, it's dry desert air, man. Man, it looks good in here. Well, <laughs> it doesn't look good, but it's but gonna look good. By Northern or Canadian yeah. uh, car perspective that's this old? That's the thing, isn't it? It's amazing. Yeah. To not have rust just blows our mind. So excuse us if we mention the lack of rust a hundred thousand times. Because we have cars that are four years old that are always under rust <laughs> that's battery. Right. One of the uh, bonuses that came with the car is, well, the original owner's manual and this Haynes shop manual, which is actually already come in useful, hasn't it? Yes, it has to show me where some of the clips were. Yeah, so uh, thanks Russ for including those when you ship the car up here. Uh, it's pretty cool to have an original owner's manual and an original Haynes manual. Desert Sun, this is lovely. Flush, <laughs> flexible, lovely leather like vine. <laughs> it is completely dried out, huh? It's beyond. I've never seen this before. It's like wizen old lady parts in there. <laughs> in the tradition of Moog from Mighty Car Mods, we're doing a little uh, archaeology here, and it looks like we have 40 year old cookie crumbs, maybe some Pringle action there too and some bits of plastic from the de decayed seat cushion. Anything else you see there, Moose? Skank. Skank. There's a lot of skank. A lot of skank. And if this was Smell-O-Vision, you'd be throwing up in your mouth right now because it really does not smell good in here. And that, my friends, is a skanky pile of carpeting. It's actually pretty thick. It's kind of like 70s shag, isn't it? It's kind of shagadelic in there. And there was a little bit of moisture under one of the carpets. Uh, we're thinking maybe that was just from when uh, we towed the car home because it was teeming rain that day. As you can see, a little wild beast in there tearing out carpet. Oh God, that's nasty. So nasty. And the floors all have kind of a pink fuzz on them from the under padding slash sound deadening stuff. But there's also a, like a glued down layer of sound deadening as well. The typical stuff you see on a chassis for sound deadening. Which I think maybe we'll remove with the old dry ice trick. So maybe we'll show you that in the next episode. But in the meantime, the interior is pretty much emptied out now. Just have to do the rear quarters. Oh yeah, the rear quarter trim. the door yeah. on this side. The door on that side, yeah. And that's pretty much it, other than the roof and the headliner. Oh, the headliner, yeah, I guess we'll tear that out too. Alright, more to come. So that wraps up this episode of Project Celica. We pretty much gutted the interior now. A couple little bits and pieces we'll pull out, pull out afterwards, but this is what we're left with. A giant stinking pile of carpet. Two uh, seats with uh, vinyl that's just gone to complete hell. Door cards that are hideous and we may use as templates for something nicer. Your seats, plastic trim, the whole nine yards, it's out of there. So in the next episode, I think we'll get down to some more serious stuff. Maybe we'll look at uh, swapping that steering column. Maybe we'll look at uh, dropping BMZ in the engine bay. So until then, uh, we will see you next time. Make sure you check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash gofastwithclass. And you can find us on Instagram and Twitter and all that other good stuff too. I want to thank you, Moose. Appreciate the help.
This episode was brought to you by the letter B, for beans, of course, and whatever other favorite B words you might have, like, I don't know, boogers, boobies, whatever you like. <laughs>